this is a warning. What you're about to see is literally going to be painful for a lot of you, so viewer discretion is advised. It's funny, I'm taking a break, and I was watching back the footage, and I can hear how excited I am, my adrenaline. That's how this stuff makes you. When you're, I mean, I wouldn't call myself a hoarder. I've got a 10 by 10 foot space with all very valuable things that are valuable to me. But I have hoarded before. When I first started all this, getting gear at the Goodwill, because it's dirt cheap, you know, so that's an MMS sleep system that if you buy it right now, $2.99 complete for a grade A, that's a grade A, you know, so I found that at the bins. I believe that when I got from the bins, yeah, so it was $5, so that's an incredible value. So when I say value, it's valuable to me, but it's also a killer deal, literally. But watching back the footage, I can see that energy, right? <gasps> because I've got to get out of here. I can't afford to keep this place. It's been great, but it's also out of sight, out of mind. I know I've got all this stuff, but it's, it's okay, it's in there. But then, you know, you don't have the money to afford it. You can't have it both ways. But I can see that it's the first time I've been back here because I've got to deal with this. I've got 15 days left to get rid of it. And I can see, I, I put it off. I don't want to go, oh, I'll do it tomorrow, I'll do it tomorrow. And that's what I've been doing. And then the next month comes, okay, 54 more dollars. Okay, I'll do it next month. But you've got to do it. And I've been through it with people who are real hoarders. I mean, I've seen the extreme. I had a friend who had a 5,000 square foot warehouse packed to the ceilings. Extreme hoarding. It's a disease. It's a sickness. But again, I don't consider myself a hoarder. <laughs> but when I see all this stuff and I'm halfway through it, we're going to go back in. But that was 10 minutes and it just makes me realize or want to reiterate that point that the reality is that it's, you know, the real reality is it's what you've got on your back. In that backpack that you've got on is everything. You've got to have your sleep system, you know, and your defense system is really, for me, that's, that's where I'm coming from. So it's going to be my rifle, my sidearm, ammunition. The way you do it's going to be totally different. It's what's important to you. What are your needs? And the laws where you live. A lot of people watching this can't have weapons, which is extremely scary and horrible, but that's the reality. But in my mind now, as I'm sitting here going, okay, chill out. I have to start making decisions. Okay, what's going, what's, what's extremely valuable, you know? And you're gonna see I'm gonna lay things out into piles where it's yes, no. And you have to be just real cut and dry, black and white. Yes, no. How does it serve me? And I've got three of them. Well, you've got to take that time. I've got to go through all three of them. Or with the BDUs, you know, the 15, 20 that I've got, got to narrow it down. <laughs> it's funny. But it's, it's sad, too. I guess what I've seen, though, is then I've got friends that are multimillionaires that, you know, you can look around here. Look at this. Okay? See these? And these are the small ones. These units, I've got friends that are extremely wealthy that have units, this entire thing, and it's all theirs, right? Like the one friend, 5,000 square feet of storage. And that was one place and there were 20 other ones like it. <laughs> so the thing is, you get more money, you get more stuff, literally. Instead of having, you know, seven, or 20 sets of BDUs, you're going to have 2,000. It goes with, you know, when you've got the money, it just all, you see how that works? It's true. I've seen it. But it feels good, too. When you do it, you realize, you know, you didn't need that stuff. For me, it's a financial thing because it's always that fear of, well, when I need it again, I can't afford to buy that MMS sleep system for $300. I can't afford that. I can't afford to buy the BDU kit that 
at a surplus store or online, I'm, it's going to cost me a hundred bucks, right? I got it for a dollar, but it's that fear. And you have to just let that go and go, Hey, this is what I got. Cause in a real situation, if you've ever been in a house fire, it's what you, boom, you grab it, you're out. You've got nothing. A lot of times you're in your underwear and you have to think like that. It's what you can grab and get out with. And for me right now, being homeless, because I'm waiting to get the vehicle back, I live in my vehicle in a van. So right now I'm homeless. Luckily I've been able to find a place, a garage that I'm staying in. So that's been good. Because it's better than being on the streets. Because you know, it's all fun and games. You see the videos, um, I'm in an urban setting. So you're stealth camping. It's extremely dangerous, but more than that, it's just extremely frustrating. It gets old real quick. It's fun for a couple nights, but just the constant bullshit you have to deal with because you're always hiding, you're always on the move. The place you're at that was perfect, and blah, 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 gets taken by someone else. You've got constant riffraff, constant animosity, theft. You know, you don't want to be getting in fights and it's not what you need to be doing, you know? So stealth camping and being homeless is, I see the videos on here, but that's all fake. <laughs> you know, most of it, you may be stealth camping, which is highly questionable whether or not that person really stealth camped there for the night. The reality that I know is they've got a camper van five feet away and they set their gear up, film it, oh, we're hiding, oh. It's all just editing. You can fake anything. And then they're sleeping in their van and, you know, it's very easy, so I don't buy it. But the reality is when you're doing it for real, it's a whole different world. It's not like you're soundly sleeping each night. You know, like you're gonna turn off the light and, night, Bill, night, Jed, night, Ma, night, Pa. You know, like the Waltons. You're sleeping with one eye open. So it's dangerous. You know, physically dangerous. Like right now in Portland, Oregon, we've had, it's either seven or nine homeless people have been murdered in the last couple months. And that's by, I think all by gunfire, getting shot. So it's not a game, it's a real deal. It's, it's a war zone. And in the United States, people here don't, <clears throat> there's no war here, so living on the streets, if you're on the streets, that's the closest thing to war that you're gonna see with the gangs and the prostitution and the theft and the intimidation and everything that goes along with being on the streets. It's a nice Cessna. It's a war zone. And not even as bad as 99.9% of the world that has it, that's living in a real war zone, where you've got incoming you know, mortars and rockets and drones and people shooting you and killing you and your family and rape and torture. So I'm not comparing it to that, I'm just saying it's about the closest thing you're gonna find here right now. Yeah, so the point of this little, I just had a cigarette, but watching it back, I can see just how amped up I am. Just, you know, it's pretty funny. And that energy comes from the stuff and knowing that I've got to get rid of it. It's half excitement, half tragedy. So we're back. Just open up this first bin. Maybe getting too dark in here, but here's a beautiful wool sweater, which I have another addiction with these. I've got 10 of them right now. So I've got to narrow that down. All kinds of paracord. There's one of those cheapo emergency um, blankets. They do work, but, you know, barely. But good to have just because they weigh nothing. These are great any kind of weather that you're in. It's little bear claws, strap them on your feet. Here's my old, I don't know if this is Pathfinder. I think it is. Little bush pot. Heavy duty 
drum liner, 3 mil. Real nice vintage. Is that vintage? I don't know. Who is that? Anyway, just a real nice wool cap. Tuna Creations. MRE heaters. I'll keep that. Nice binoculars. Tascos. This is, these are good. Real powerful and small. Here's my first compass. This is probably 15 years old. It's a Silva. I love this compass. Oh no, it's, is this a, who is it? Sunton? Can't remember the name. Love this compass. Just so simple. I love it. Because I've got the MC2, the Sunto. Just because it's one unit, it's compact, and it's got the mirror. That's the only reason I use it. Because it's all together, just one thing. What was the name of this? Unton. Brunton? God, I can't remember. That's just a little piece of reflective tape. So that way if you drop it, you can find it. It's a little Ryobi drill. This I could take today. Hair dryer, this is for when, who knows, I was melting wax, probably that auto wax. Mm, this is still good. It's an MRE peanut butter. It's probably 10 years old, but I'll eat it. That's just one. So there's one, two, three, four, five. And we've got these giant gigantors here. This is part of my living system inside the vehicle. Another giant one. And then over here we've got one, two, three, four. And then four boxes, two more giant crates. You can see where this is going, right? There's some um, gear. Ooh, there's an old PBR. What is this stuff? Windshield wiper blade. Here's an old MRE. What's this? Algrotin potato. I mean, Uko matches. The hell knows what this stuff is. What's this? Oh, it's a nice old down jacket. Rifles. There's a nice Kevlar vest. And that's wild to think of how quick technology changes. Look at this. This thing's a tank. Is that mold? Tank. Compared to now, the new stuff is just as strong. It's Kevlar, but it weighs half of that, literally. So it's amazing how quickly times change. You've got the same protection, something that used to be like this, and that weight. And now it's like this, and a quarter of the weight. The new stuff is pretty incredible. Let's see. Oh, oi, oi. I'll have to edit. This was for a video I was going to do on, um, basically, being real stealthy in an environment where you don't want to have, you know, a camouflage military backpack on. Never made it, but that's what that was for. I remember it. Single wall bottles, containers. These are old. Hand sanitizer. Aye. Right. It's gotta be toiletries or I think this is important papers. 
I think I was looking for it. That's a radio pouch. What's this? Oh, it's a sustainment pouch. <clears throat> this is what you use to expand the size of your backpack. It's just a pouch, basically. They're called sustainment pouches. MRE heaters. N95s. Syringe. Can't remember if this was German. It's just a real nice piece. Steel. Remember when I got it, I couldn't figure out how to put it together. It only fits one way. It was brilliantly made. See that little groove? So that way the tip of the fork doesn't puncture your gear. Can't see what it says. I was thinking it was German. Maybe it's American. Ay, ay, ay. Well, let's move on to the next one, see what's in there. Ah, um, so I know I, I knew I had these. <clears throat> so they're Mountain House. And at the time, so I got these two years ago. And the deal, they were on sale for two for $8. Two for eight dollars. Any flavors you wanted it was at Buy Mart. Two for eight. And now I happened. I looked at them. I think they're selling for twelve bucks each. And I believe that all these containers. What is this? Jiffy Pop. But I think that all of these containers, I believe. Mm, look at that. Those are rifle winter gloves. <clears throat> These are the liners for the gloves. See, it's got the little fingers. That way you can shoot. Those are nice. But I think all three of these are all <clears throat> full of Mountain House. <clears throat> if I remember correctly. There's another civilian bag. And I'll keep these because I'm going to load these up with stuff that I'm dumping. Another pair. Look at this. See what I'm talking about? Another pair of the rifle gloves, the liners. But I'll keep these backpacks. I'll start filling them full of stuff that I'm going to dump. N95s. I was looking for these. This is a curling iron, but I was using these to seal the uh, mylar to make custom MREs. I knew I had these. So these are bogs. And it's basically a muck boot. You know, very similar. It's not real muck, but I knew I had them and I couldn't find them. You know, if you want to go waterproof, this is the way to go. A real nice muck boot. Again, these are bogs. Hard to get rid of these. I'll probably keep these. Again, I'm, I'll have my van back soon. So that enables me to keep them. So I'll have space. All right, let's move on to the next one. this. This may be some zip-offs I was looking for. Yeah, I remember these. They're not zip-offs, but they're just a nice nylon. I mean, even over BDUs, that's what I prefer. Another nice pair. You can see the difference. But this in the bush, you catch a branch with this or, a, you know, rips. This not gonna happen but these are extremely heavy I'm talking about hot conditions 
So you're burning up. I mean, they're cotton. Yeah, these are real. So it's cotton. They're excellent. I don't know what that was for. Oh, this must be razor blades or something. Yeah, I used to use this in a video. Yeah, that's razor blades and for escape and evasion stuff. So that's the difference. You know, this is ultra light, which for the last couple years is what I'm loving. But how long is this going to hold up in a you know, bushy situation versus this? This catches a twig or something. It might, you know, it's, not, it's, it's going to hold up probably better than this. But the difference of temperature, radically different. And weight, right? That can go. Oh, oh, I think I remember these. This is a real high-end pant. These should be Helicon Techs. This is a real high-end tactical pant. Yeah, Helicon Techs. I've often thought of these. I don't think they have an insert for the knee. That's a beautiful pant. Again, so, you know, you're looking at these Helicon Techs. Those new are going to cost you, I think they're 120 bucks. I got those at Goodwill for $1. And this is going to be where it gets complex, too, because you can see all my hair was starting to get in my BDU uniforms. Here's the top with the bottom. But, oh, look at that. will be easy. Look at that. There's some burn holes cigarettes or campfire so that's what makes it easier okay those are out but you got to take the time and go through it because I've got three sets of this so I've got to pick the best here's the sweater I was talking about a couple weeks ago on the live this is my military wool sweater is this English let's see no, this is, I believe, is American. 100% wool. Uh, name, service number. Yeah, this is American. Anyway, this is the one I've had. Got this same thing for, you know, a dollar. And when I got it, in that video I was talking about, it had been cut. Injured somehow. I don't know what had happened to it. Not a injury to the body because there's no blood on it but I just rough stitched it up but there you go there's my answer for my wool sweater there it is because it's tested and it's also tactical for me so it works it serves multi multi purposes but like I said warmest sweater I've ever had wool socks Another obsession, but I just scored like eight. Look at those nice Carhartt fatties. I don't know if they're wool, though. Nice cashmere scarf. Oh, God. So this is the military underwear. This is made of polypropylene. But I've got four sets of it. So, this will be getting dumped. And these aren't cheap anymore. So the tops at the surplus store anywhere are 25 bucks and the bottoms are like 30, 40 bucks. Look at that, mint. But this is what I was talking about earlier. This is what goes with the military sleep system here. So that's part of the kit. If you want to get down to negative 30. Oh, these are going to be another pair of the snow pants that I was talking about. And so this is a Gore-Tex. Rip stop, but this is what you're going to wear during the cold weather. Once it gets dark, you want to put these on. It'll change your whole experience in the woods. But I already know that I've got, and get them big too. 
So if you wear a large, get an XL. If you wear a medium, get a large. Because then you can put them on over your stuff. Let's see what this is. Oh, that's an old REI sweater. You know, so here we're looking at the color. So this is all what we need, right? Basically, you're looking for olive drab green. <laughs> That's it. That's what works. If you're in the forest, like me. If you're in the desert, then you'd want it to be, you know, olive. Like this. This is the back plate for shoulder straps to a chest rig. Oh no, this is for a gun belt. I don't use this, but I kept it. Let's see what's in the next one. Oh boy. Nuts. Wow, the smell coming off is pretty heavy. Good stuff. These are all my go-tos. Mashed potatoes. Look at that rice. Mac and cheese. Instant oatmeal. Jesus. Oh god, is this all food? I bet it is. Rice. Beans. So these are all staples. Bouillon. 7-Up, you have chemically treated water, and a massive taste, tuna creation, you know, these are all staples, because I know that one part of the storage unit was, hey, I've got a location, if anything ever happens, stock up that location so it's a little... A little, you know, dump. Meaning that I've got rice and beans and such. Where I could access it. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. I wonder how many times I've said ay, ay, ay. It's because it's overwhelming. You just don't realize how much you've got. I'm hoping that one of these has the World War II bag that I cannot find. That's an Amazon shirt that I found at the bins. I was going to do a whole thing on quick change disguise stuff. Because you find this stuff all the time. And you could see how simply putting a shirt on is it's an official Amazon shirt. You could instantly be an Amazon driver and blend into a situation or escape a situation. So many videos that weren't made. Nice neck gator. You know, that's the other thing if you're a creator. 99% of the videos never get made because the ideas never stop. Nice leather um, rifle case. This stuff I recognize. Mm. I was looking for that. Look at that, still going. Keeps a licking and keep on ticking, right? But that's Timex. This is a G-Shock Casio. This is old. There's a nice Mora. This is an old one. Just a Mora Basic. This is a mod that you do to them. You add just a Ranger Band or a black rubber tire tube. That keeps it um, secure so it doesn't pop out. Sometimes they pop out. Oh, I see a Leatherman. Let's see what this guy is. The Leatherman. I don't remember the model. Wave? Leatherman. Wingman. That's right. Nice piece of kit. But I have the Leatherman Super Tool 300 that I've had for... I don't even know what. 15 years. I think this is a really cool compass. 
strange digital. Or not digital, but we'll see. It's an art form filming with one hand. Yeah, so it's a compass. But it's a weird, basically you look into it. You can't see it on film, but it you point it, you know, what direction it is, and boom, it'll show you inside there. It's a sunto also. How do I get rid of that? It weighs nothing, so here's a life straw. This is all first aid stuff. Look at all that. Stuff. All this first aid stuff. Matches, lip balms, Advil. Little containers full of spices. Oh, here's an old fish calf thing. These are little tins. You can see how old this is. There's the hole for when you're making char cloth, which I've learned later, you don't need the hole. There was never any reason to cut this, to puncture it. You don't need it at all. I learned that from Joshua, gray bearded green beret. The, the smoke will escape or the oxygen. Let's see if I can open it with one hand. Damn it. Some flat surfaces. Yeah, so this is probably Vaseline. There's a wet fire. There's a ferrocerium rod. Yeah, this is early bushcraft stuff. So this is 10, 12 years old. Did a lot of videos with this stuff that was on the old channel, so that's all gone. Oh, I was looking for that. There's an earpiece for a bow fan. It's a lighter mod I made. Basically, it holds your lighter. It's just a bike tube. Remember this stuff? Oh, there's the rescue mirror I was looking for. Signal mirror. That's a real one. This I learned from Dave Canterbury. These are just choker chains for dogs. These make excellent tools for bushcraft. Great instant pot hangers. You know, you just simply run it through. And now you've just created a little um, marlin spike, basically. Anyway, you can hang things and move them up and down on over a fire pit. I use this quite a bit. It was a great piece of kit. And so it weighs, I don't know, I bet five ounces. But just versatile. Think of all the things you can do, and it's steel. So it's bulletproof. These are little tins. And I know what they're filled with. I think one's salt, one's pepper, one's Vaseline, one's Neosporin, you know, that kind of stuff. And this is just an old vintage canvas. Again, this is all old stuff from the old channel that I would use for, you know, the bushcraft stuff. Ooh, that's very valuable. So I use these in my, I keep one of these on me at all times. This is just a road flare, but this is guaranteed fire. When you absolutely positively need to get a fire going right here. I've got a video on it. Pouring ass rain, soaking wet. Even the material is soaking wet. The tinder or the um, kindling. And this thing, you spark one of these up. You know, you spark it. like a, Just like lighting a match. You, it comes with a little lighter in here. So you spark it. This thing will get wet kindling going. Literally. They burn for, I think, 15 minutes. It says what, they, what they're supposed to be, but incredible piece of kit. Highly recommend always having one of these on you in any situation, because you can also use this for signal help, right? To mark your zone if you're getting exfilled, if you're getting um, rescued or whatever. Great piece of kit. And they're spending now. Nice paracord. Here's my, um, I know who like this. My good friend Rob Neese from Neese Bushcraft. He just did a great video on making a, a um, 
pace bead from natural things that he found. I think he used bamboo? I'm not sure what he used, but anyway, he made it all off, off the ground. But these are the ones I make. So this is called a Celtic knot. This is paracord. It's a fun knot because it gives you these balls. And then it's just paracord on paracord. You make the Celtic knot. And so up top you've got uno, dos, tres, cuatro, right in between here. And then down here you're going to have, what is it, nine? Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis, siete, ocho, nueve. And so for every hundred meters you walk, or for every, you know, you, you set the pace. But so here's a hundred, two hundred, three hundred, four hundred, nine hundred. And then it's one of these, one thousand. And you start over. These are the ones I make. Super lightweight, Celtic knot. Look it up. It's a great knot to learn. It's real complex in the beginning, and once you get it, you'll love it. So that's old. That's at least 12 years old. Always have Hanks at this bank line. There's an old, what is this, the P-51? These are old military can openers. Bulletproof. Let's see what it says. I think this is a real one. U.S. Shelby Company. Hmm. Anyway, great piece of kit. Definitely keeping that. Oh yeah, yeah. Again, oh, yeah, yeah. I have to have another cigarette. Literally. I mean, look at what we've created. Look at this. It just keeps growing. Can you even see it? I'm gonna go through the other side. And it's a foot thick now. I should, I wish I could do a time lapse. And look at that. And that's now a foot thick back there. So that's stuff on top of stuff. It's the IIIs when I edit this, which my new style you've seen in these videos, I've stopped editing. I just put it up, let it roll. I, can, I don't care anymore. But I'd love to count out the IIIs because they're all real. It's all the I ve, I ve, I, por Dios. You're just going, it's too much. Because the too much is again coming in knowing that I'm have to get rid of this stuff. It's not the getting rid of it, because physically it'll be easy to dump, but it's the pain. So this is a new version of pounds equal pain, if you know that saying. These are pounds that are going to equal a lot of pain for me. Now this, I know what this is, because what it was is I was doing, um, I was making EDC kits, Altoid kits, you know little Altoid can so you put it in your pocket and this is what I was making them with so I'd buy this in bulk so these are little ferrocerium rods ferrocerium rods and these are those little wet tabs you you know put water on them they come to life little button compasses here's the knives this is a razor blade Here's the lights that I used. Yeah, nice. Compasses. Wet fires. Those I'll keep. Compasses. Here we go. More sail needles. So this is how I would make the kit. Right? So it would have one of each of these in it. And it was good. I sold them, but the money, there's no... You can't compete with um, who's the largest, not Ecotac, what are they called? Ecotac makes the lighter covers for Bix. What are they called? Super famous. Starts with an E. I can't, I'm spacing it right now. But because, you know, I'm buying, you know, 10 of these at that price. Well, they're buying 1 million of them. So they're getting for 0.1 cent. I'm paying 10 cents each. And when you go to sell the item, it's only selling for $40, say. Well, I was losing money on it because I don't have that buying power. Does that make sense? It's all about 
you know, you have to buy in massive bulk to get it down to, instead of 10 cents an item, it's got to cost you 0.1 cent an item. So then you're making profit. So it wasn't profitable, so I stopped. These are all um, Ranger bands, or basically black rubber bands. Some wet fires. These are the whistles that were coming with it. They came with one Uko match with a striker. This was, um, I think I was also making of these, these little Mylar bags. That was a different kit. Here's some wet fires. Oh, nice beeswax candles. That was part of it. I'd break them, you know, right about here. That was another part of it. I think that was it. There's more stuff in it, but I can't remember. So these wet fires were good, but again, I've got 5,000 of them, right? And these are great, but I've got 5,000. These are great, but I've got 10,000 of them, right? Water tablets. And these are great. And these are great, but I've got 5,000 of them. And these lights are great. But this is all getting done. Because I don't have the time or energy and it's not worth anything financially. You know, you can't sell it. Nobody wants it. So, you do what's called uh, add it to the pile. The garbage pile. Let's see what else we got. This guy, that's a medical, not medical, but that's, oh, binoculars? No, what are these? These are medical kits, DVDs, that is all junk. Oh, what's in here? Hmm, slingshot. And a flask. Keep that for sure. Slingshot. Curious to see what's in here and in here. Oh, I see a canteen. Oh god! Oh. So this, I know what this is because this is my first canteen cup. That's an aftermarket Rothko lid, but this cup was one of my first pieces of kit from 15 years ago. When I was doing the videos, I believe it's World War II. Let me think. No. That's the butterfly handle. So, it's too dark in here. And then here, these are great. These are what I use for my stove. So this is just a, I could squish this with my hand, but basically, you put that down. You create your fire in here. Right, with your tinder and your stuff and your kindling and you can load it. Your little pieces in here. See it? So you're loading it with the wood or whatever. And then this guy you basically bend it so it fits, but Let's see if we can focus. Then it just sits on it, right? So you've got a little stove. Does that make sense? I don't know if you've seen these. A lot of people have never seen these, but that's basically it. Ultimate system. And then here you've got your lid. This is an aftermarket one. And there you've got a full cook system. But this isn't worth anything. And it's not something I use. It's, it's much more of a bushcraft thing. But, so that's going away. This is more medical Tiger Balm. <clears throat> Toothbrush. Mm, some sort of little meds. I'll have to check those out. See what they are. Tums, razors, big nail clippers, moleskin. Oh no, nicotine pouches. Floss. Soap. And again, I'm going through all this real quick, but I will, I mean, maybe. I don't really have much time to spend on it, but that's all junk. I remember this bag, it's a super lightweight ripstop. Well, 
Obviously, the color would never work unless you're trying to get rescued. Oh, I remember this. This is an old, um, beautiful down. It's not military, but it's made by a military contractor from the 60s. Beautiful down bag. Let me see if it smells still. Or not smells still, but no, no smell. But nobody wants it, so that's all junk. Back in. So this one. This is the Alice pack. Let's see what this is. <clears throat> this is a U.S. Army. It's a large Alice pack. I think this one's from the 80s. Field pack, so DLA 183. This is a nice pack. But, again, nobody wants it. The resale value on this is only, if you're lucky, you're gonna get 20 bucks for them selling, so. That's going in the pile. But I saw in here, this is a good, this is my Kevlar helmet. So, oh, that stays. That's very sentimental, right? <laughs> and then this is a beautiful haversack. It's U.S. World War II, if I remember correctly, is 1942. Let's see if we can see it on here. There it is, 1942. Again, sentimental, but I have three of them. I know there's two others. But this has been with me since the beginning, so this is 15 years old that I've had this one using it. Did a whole video once using all vintage military World War II gear. Wish I had that. That was on the old channel. Deleted. But it was a three-nighter. All vintage military gear. So that was the bag. 1942 Haversack. The bag that I'm hoping is in here is a 1942 Mountaineering World War II Army pack. Then I had the two pup, taf, pup tent halves, which I hope are in here. It's not looking good, but... So this I can sell. I can get... These sell for about 50 bucks. But it's got some damage to it. Beautiful. Look at that vintage bobby pin. But if not, you know, nobody wants this stuff. And trust me, I put out the word. I mean, you've heard me say it 20 times in this video. Nobody wants it. I've told anyone I know who's remotely into it. There's no space or no use for it. So, you know, like this is a killer bag. I have a medium Alice pack. And so theoretically, this would fit the frame. So that could be interesting. That would give me a choice. Because I'm running with that Alice pack. It's just... Amazingly, it still comes in lighter than other modern gear that I've used. It's bulletproof. It's extremely modular if you don't know how the Alice pack works. That space that the frame creates behind... Well, the frame itself, you could turn it and then the frame can be used... It was built specifically so it carries the ammo boxes, certain types of weaponry, all kinds of gear, radio equipment. So it's multi-purpose. And amazingly, this bag, this one's coming in, this feels heavy. I mean, heavier, I'm, I'm running the medium one right now. But it's a beautiful bag. And what's great, I, I am a big hater of pockets. You know, if you watch my videos, I despise pockets. But it's pockets on modern gear like Osprey or Kelty. Where there's a pocket inside of a pocket inside of a pocket underneath a velcro zipper cover right this drives me insane i hate it so i've always tried to in those you'll see i cut out all the pockets i just want a bucket that's it and that's what we're dealing with here these bags are beautiful because it's just a bucket okay but these pouches all have a purpose and i can i'm very into things with purpose 
So, it's the, that way they can train soldiers, right? So that way, the thing when you're training a soldier is that, you know, you hope people complain and say, it's so stupid. I don't want to do a, you know, mundane, stupid things. Walk 10 feet, take three steps left. Do it a hundred times in a row. Well, it's not to do the task, it's to see that discipline, that brainwashing almost. But that's what saves lives, right? It's the same thing with the bag. Ooh, big. Look at, here comes a private Nike jet. They have their own runway here at the airport. So right now, you can see that Nike. So that's either Phil Knight, Michael Jordan, Tiger Woods. Well, Tiger left. But that's somebody big on that plane flying into Hillsboro, Oregon right now because the Nike campus world headquarters is in Beaverton which is only a 15 minute drive from here so they have their own private airport here at the Hillsboro airport Nike and Intel so somebody very important was on that plane anyway so what I am into is pockets with purpose and what I was trying to tell you is so in the training the kit, the bag, all the bags are going to be identical. So in this pouch, it's going to be your medical kit. This pouch, it's radio. Ammo's here. Magazine's here. Blah, 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 blah. Over and over and over. That's so that way, the reason it exists is because you're carrying your kit. It's set up correctly and boom, 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 boom. You get killed. You go down. Well, the next guy can come up and he can access that kit and knows exactly where this, 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 this is. Or you need medical attention. Well, your med kit should be right here. Now, did that always happen? Obviously not. People go, I don't like this. This is bullshit. Doesn't work. So they modified their kits. But that was the reasoning behind it. So these kits, or the bags, are built to go a certain way. Does that make sense? So in this pocket, you know, this pocket is for your medical kit. This pocket is for a grenade. This pocket is for a magazine. Okay, moving on here. The center pocket, this is for a radio. This is for, you know, whatever it's going to be. Make sense? So it's tempting to keep this. It's quite a bit heavier than the medium. But it's tempting to just try it. Because it's more of a, I'd say it's about a 65 liter. Versus the medium Alice that I have, which is from 72 is much lighter but it's only maybe a 45 liter so this is much more of a long-term one pack solution so actually i'll hold on to that and take it with me now and mount it onto that alice pack frame should be the same frame and we'll see so what else have we got obviously a kevlar helmet I mean, this is to replace this, and this is old school. This one I've had for, oh God, 10 years. But to replace it is going to be a lot of money and not something that you're just going to dump, you know. Like you can see this Kevlar vest, you know, I don't know where I put it, but, oh, here it is. So... Kevlar has expiration dates, and I was talking earlier how this same vest that weighs, you know, literally easily five, I bet this weighs 10 pounds. Well, 10 years ago, it was state of the art. It was state of the art because when I bought it, it was 600 bucks. And it was the first, it was flexible and lightweight, and it was great because that's what you had. You wished, man, I wish I had something lighter. Well, didn't exist then. Well, now, 10, 15 years later, the technology's there. The new stuff is this, like this. And I believe it's stronger than that. And it weighs a quarter of that weight. So th what it is, is Kevlar comes with a date stamped on it. It was made on, what's today? January, February, March, April. So it was made on April 18th, 2020. Well, the time on it recommended is five years, normally. So... It's just a big deal. When you try and sell Kevlar, is it legal to sell it? Is it not legal to sell it? Who are you selling it to? What are their purpose? Do you want that? You know what I'm trying to say? So Kevlar is a strange thing to try and resell. Plus with the expiration date, a lot of people can stick by that. Hey, it's five years. Oh, getting windstorm. 
so it doesn't work anymore. I don't believe that at all. I pretty much would bet my life that I'd put that on right now because it's been stored properly, always. Flat, cool. And I bet you it could take a round and would work just like the day it was built. But I understand. So, this I moved away because obviously I'm not going to just dump that in the garbage for some random to grab it with bad intentions, you know. I've got Kevlar. Now I can do this thing. So I'm not going to put it out there for some psycho to get it. So I'll take care of it properly. I'd give it to somebody, but I've asked multiple people. Nobody wants it, but I'll figure out some way to get rid of it safely. You can take them to the police station, fire department. They'll discard them. So, all right, let's keep going. But that um, Alice pack will come with me. You know, even though I'm dumping all this stuff, as I go through it, bing, little things light up in your head and you go, ooh, hold on one second, one second. So, let's dive back in. So this is funny, I just opened up one of the boxes and look what's in here. An old VHS and an old um, DVD player. And that's full on like, oh, <laughs> look at that stuff. That's full on prepping stuff, right? I'm gonna need a VHS and a DVD player for the future. But not really. What it is is a few years ago online, VHS exploded because apparently there's only one company left in the world that's still making VHS players. So their price shot up. So a VHS player, anything like that was selling for 150 bucks. The market is gone now. Same with the old DVD players, but too funny. You know, that's the other thing. You don't know what you've got. Now this one I'm excited to get into. Because I'm praying that my pup set. Oh, this is a nice down coat. Oh, that's oh, it's gonna be hard to get rid of. Oh, I see a nice duffel bag. Oh yeah, that's an oldie. Look at that baby. The camera was acting weird, but is this American? Let me see. Yeah, it's American. Let's see. What year is it? Carlos Blanco. It's just a strange... Oh, there's something in it, too. What's in it? I don't know. Oh. I never saw this. Flash card flashlight. Look at that. That's cool. Never knew that was in there. And this is old. This is... I'd say this is... Late 80s, I bet. I don't have the time right now, but I've got quite a few of these. But bulletproof, obviously, you know. But from this, I can tell it's. I mean, that could be Vietnam era. I'd have to find the stamp, but I got to keep moving, so. I could use that to load stuff in that I'm going to dump, like all this because those aren't worth anything. Unless they're from World War II. You know, you gotta think that millions and millions. Oh, ooh, beautiful. Let's see what this is. These look like Carhartts on top. I'm guessing, yeah, those are Carhartts. That's a beautiful pair. It's almost, it's a ripstop. Nice Carhartts. Those are my old, those are some old work pants. But these, I've been looking for these. These are propers. And these are just a recreation of the classic pant. They should be propers, in fact. Yeah, they're propers. Oh, we're losing our battery. Beautiful pant. I was looking for these. So it's just a BDU, but it's just a beautiful beautiful color just a standard you know khaki military but it's just an exact you know free production of the vintage pant so these are something that I'll definitely keep I just can't I can't part with them but we'll see because 
I remember correctly, they were a little big for me. But what I'm really hoping to find... Oh, this is old stuff of mine from middle school. Oh, not anymore. Oh, look, it's an old... I've been looking. This is... A, I'll need this. This is um, the first high-end USB mics that came out 20 years ago. They're called Blues. And this is an old... These are drives with crypto. So that's an old drive. It's got crypto on it. Let's see what it's worth. There's an external hard drive with old music on it. And old videos. Wow. I wonder if How to Survive in the Woods videos are on here. I'm going to take this. That was my old channel. What's this? More pants. Old pair of Levi's, probably. No, more Carhartts. I can get ten bucks a piece for these Carhartts. Well... It's a bummer, but, you know, you got to get rid of things, so. But this is exciting. This may have old videos from the old channel, because I've never seen this since the channel was deleted. But I recognize this drive. I remember this. So this is a project for tonight. That's exciting. What if the old video, some old videos are on here? That'd be so killer. Because that channel got deleted three years ago, four years ago. So those videos all disappeared. There's no way to get them back, but maybe they're on here. Exciting. Okay, so I've got my first pile narrowed down of junk. And this is it. You can see back here. So this stuff is Keeper. That's my sleep system. That's good high-end stuff. But all this up front, this is all garbage. It's not garbage, but it's going in the garbage. Because nobody wants it. I've offered it, nobody wants it. So we've got a Condor, a salt pack, a nice Kevlar vest, old, expired, nobody wants it. Junk, junk. That's a beautiful piece. Polypropylene military underwear, a bunch of clothing. There's another pair of those, those are those pants, but I've got one pair that I'm keeping. The um, camping pant. BDUs, I've got another pair that I like better. These are great, but when am I going to use them? And just a bunch of junk. And then all this stuff is all, this I'll keep. This is the Leatherman. I can sell this for 20 bucks, so I'll keep that. Baofeng. Is this a UV5R? No, it's still good though. I can keep this. Buck knife, I've got tons of those. Sanitizer, look at a whole pack of sail needles. Keep this. Some nasal pharyngeal, pharyngeal airway. Got a ton of those. This thing still works, but I'd have to buy a band for it. Sharpie, that still works, let's see. Oh yeah, I keep that, I love Sharpies. Safety whistle, 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 nail clippers, magnets. Here's a Baofeng charger, earpieces. Mm. Yeah, I'll keep it. This guy, I like. This is an old Boy Scout of America. Let's see if it's good. Where are we at? <laughs> Let me think where we're at. Okay, hold on. Mm. I think it's toast. There's a clip for the bow fang. Got a million of these. Toothpaste. Yeah. No, thank you. These are good to have. I'll keep one of these. This is a bow fang and you can put AAA batteries in it to power, so. Here's a little ferrocerium rod. Does this still work? How old is this? Look at that. Of course it works, it's a Bic. It's probably been in there for five years. I'll keep it. These are good, these are new pills for your thyroid. See here, nuke. 
you know, not like you're going to be around if there's a nuclear attack, but basically you take these pills and it can help your, um, keep your thyroid down when it swells up. But again, are you going to be around after a nuclear attack to take them? Probably not. Would you want to be? I doubt it. Just all this stuff, you know, and you've got 50 of them. So, all of this, and then all of this stuff. This thing's cool. Can't keep it all. These are little mini walkie-talkies. You can tap these into your bow fangs. That way, if you're with, you know, you've got one bow fang, but you're with three people, you got three of these, you can just program them in and use them. This is that old, these are vintage, or this is vintage. These are all cables for programming the bow fangs. Cool. Look at that, there's some old um, birch bark. Keep that. You see what's important? <laughs> so all that junk, waterproof bags, so I don't need it. Paracord, paracord, paracord. You can only have so much paracord. There's a little wet fire. Junk emergency blankets. What else? Blow dryer. No. Nope. Iron for the now. Nope. I filled this bag up. Old wool hat, scarves, bear claws. So basically all of this is going. I'll just put it into these bags. This stuff I'll put aside, but I'll probably dump it all. I mean, I've already got one of these, so I don't need, that's the thing, I don't need two of them. Bow fang, I've already got two good bow fangs. I'll definitely keep the Sharpie. I'll keep the Sharpie, for sure. A little wet fire, for sure. This is all questionable. I mean, I'll keep this, for sure. Why not? Because I'll use it. So I'll think about this stuff. This I can probably get 20 bucks for. Maybe. <laughs> It's new too, I never, I didn't like it. It's a killer unit, but it didn't have a saw. I don't know, just never. But it's Leatherman, it's beautiful. I think it's 80 bucks new, so I can probably get 10 bucks for it. Maybe 15, 20. Water purification tabs. Anyway, so there's um, dump number one, and then <laughs> here we go. So this is all still staying, right? My original pant, the butt pack. It'll probably go, but for now, I'll put it over here. These are killer, but I have a different kind of camo that I use. They're just, they're cool. This stuff. I think all this stuff will get dumped. These are sustainment pouches. I mean, you can pick these up for $5 each, so there's no resale value on them. I had to use the bathroom. This place is closed. The storage unit has a bathroom, so here's a tip for you. When you um, find these used, just remember, they've probably been used for things that you wouldn't want to be drinking out of. <laughs> anyway, more junk. I mean, I've already been out here for what? Over an hour? Haven't even begun to touch this stuff. So I guess I'll do a part two because i got to wrap this stuff up and get moving. Because it's already... It's the end of the day. It's like 6 p.m. So 
that's part one. I'll do a part two. How about that? And um, <laughs> it'll be just like this. But the whole goal is to get it down to, you know, something manageable that I can put into. Here's the goal. I'll show you just so you understand. I have room in my vehicle for these two units. Okay, so this one and this one, because this is part of my living when I'm in the van. These live in the back. And when I come to a new location, shoom, shoom, they come out, you set them up. So you've instantly got benches, workspace, and whatever storage you have in there. What, you know, the storage, you can put stuff in them. So it's my kitchen, it's my everything. So I have room, because that, that will live in the van, for these two units, right? This and this. So whatever I end up with must fit in this and this. Which means that all of this has to go. And all of this, this is keeper stuff, has to fit in it. And there's one pile. So the goal is to get five more piles like that and dump it. So I'll keep you posted. I'll be out here, I think, again tomorrow and show you more of the carnage. Ciao.